Hello YouTube! I am Pinstar, and this is Two Point Hospital Strategy and Tactics Quick Tip. So today, I figured, you know what? One good ward deserves another, so today we're going to cover the Fracture Ward, the sister to the ward proper that we covered in our previous video. If you haven't seen that yet, there's, there'll be a link to it in the description, uh, so check that out. So the Fracture Ward, today I like to call this the Sawtooth Fracture Ward, and you'll see why in just a moment. Now the Fracture Ward becomes available uh, to you at uh, once you reach the Tumble level and therefore and, and every level thereafter. Uh, not too expensive by itself, but a bit clunky when it comes to finding the right amount of space for it and making it run efficiently. That's what I'm here to solve. So, minimum uh, room size, just like with the Ward, we're going to want to go a bit above the minimum. However, we are not going to be doing a 5x4 like we did last time. Today, we are going to go with a 6x3, um, lengthwise like this. The other thing we want to do as far as placing the door goes, right here. This is the only place for the door on this particular build. So make sure you slide this, uh, this fracture ward somewhere in your hospital where it would work uh, out with the door on this side here. Now, for the nurse's station, the nurse's station uh, is actually going to be a bit more tactically placed uh, compared to the uh, ward proper, the power ward, I should say. Um, and you'll, I'll explain why in a moment. But what we're going to do is we're going to rotate it around like that, place it to the left of the door with the little nose of it pointing upwards uh, towards the uh, other side of the room. For the plaster caster, we are going to turn it around so that its back is against the wall and have its nose pointing towards the nurse's desk like so. So, um, now yes, you can get more than one plaster caster, but in this particular build, no, we don't need another plaster caster. We are, we are going to make do with one. Uh, this will still be a darn efficient room. Uh, now for the traction bits, as you can see, these things are huge, massively huge. Um, much bigger than the beds in our ward. So we're not going to be able to squeeze in uh, as many beds as we had in the ward proper um, just because of the size of these things. But we can still squeeze a fair number in for the amount of space that we are taking. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to start our first bed right up here. Uh, we're going to put it right next to here like so and bada boom. Now here's why I call it the sawtooth. Um, uh, fracture ward. See how these uh, traction beds come to a little point there at the top? If we flip you over to the other side of the um, room here, see how those two diagonals kind of line up with each other? If they were, if they're right on top of each other, they you, you wouldn't be able to do it. But by staggering them like this, like a set of teeth, you can fit them much more densely. So we go like that. Um, now in this case, in case in a case like this. Um, actually, yeah, we should be able to do that and then flip it over here. Uh, now, one of these pieces, you're going to want to hold down the control key. Because notice here, if, you, if we do just do snap to grid, it's not going to let us place this last bed. But if we hold down the control button, we can move it smoothly along the grid here, or rather detach it from the grid. And that'll let us get it to a place where it'll let us place the, the, the uh, unit. Boom! So there we have it, folks. Four traction beds, uh, one plaster caster, and a partridge in a pear tree. Now, let us accessorize. Now, just like with the uh, with our ward proper, um, we're going to want some medicine cabinets um, uh, because these things boost not only diagnosis power, but treatment power. Now, the diagnosis power bonus is kind of useless here because all this room does is treat people. You don't diagnose people in the uh, fracture ward. That being said, failing a... Uh, um, uh, a, a treatment check on uh, in the fracture ward can be lethal. Um, so this can be a source of deaths if you have poorly trained staff um, and uh, not very many bonuses. So these medicine cabinets will help uh, keep the, the deaths from mounting from this room. Um, and you can place a lot more of these things than you might think you can get away with. Now the obvious placements for these uh, right here would be up here in the corner. But a boom and bada bing. But 
there's other places you can put them. Did you know that you can actually put them as a valid placement right next to the uh, the beds here, the, the traction beds, like here on either side? This does not disrupt the, the flow of the patients or the nurses or the ability to use these things. And even though they're technically part of this red footprint, I don't know why the game allows it, but the game allows it. So I'm a, I'm a, I'm a take it like that. Now these last two over here, you're going to need to use the control button to finely tune their placement because we use the control button to finely tune the placement of this last traction bed. And we might not, it might be too tight of a squeeze here. That's okay. This is more than enough uh, medicine cabinets to give us a really, really healthy bonus here. If we uh, if we want something a little smaller, we can use a hand sanitizer over here to accomplish the uh, same thing. No? No hand sanitizer? Eh, fine. We'll leave that one blank. Uh, now, as far as radiators go, because this is a cold map, we can stick one right between the beds like right here. This should cover pretty much most of the ward and not get any, any, in anyone's way. Um, and then as before, we can use the, well, admittedly brokenly overpowered strategy of the Gold Star Ward to uh, dot these around to uh, get attractiveness around the room because we don't exactly have room for plants. Um, nor do we want people uh, in here to water them. And just keep placing these to our prestige five, like so, and we are good. Now, why um, now why have it in this specific layout other than the density of the stuff here? Why, why is the desk so important? Well, let's take it into a live demonstration and I'll show you it in action. Oh, by the way, uh, just like the, uh, uh, the the power ward, we're going to want two nurses in here. Uh, even though it's only four beds, we're going to want two nurses in here. All right, uh, let's see let's see this beast in action. So let us see the sawtooth fracture ward in. Um, in action here and once again we're going to be putting it through its paces by sending a uh, an emergency crew here We've got five people lined up uh, here ready to get their fractures treated can we do it in time let's see how the ward performs so we got patients streaming in we've got one patient left over who is uh, healing up over here um, and once again we've got two different nurses here working their thing here now, one thing I wanted to note here is um, notice how we got the the nurse got the one patient out of the bed, uh, and obviously that patient was going to head over to the uh, ca uh, plaster caster. But the um, the nurse didn't immediately go over there, knowing that there'd be someone there. That's because the the job the the order for the nurse to actually make their way over there and do that uh, doesn't actually spawn until that person actually reaches the mega, uh, the plaster caster. So the reason why I put the uh, nurse's station right here is because um, when a nurse goes idle, one of the places they are more likely to migrate themselves to um, is going to be back to the nurse's station. So the chances are that by the time um, the person's ready to have their plaster caster uh, activated, there'll be a nurse sitting right here ready to spring into action. So no, nothing we can really do to speed up this process. So we've got all of our people uh, laying in the traction beds and this, uh, I mean, it, it takes a, about a minute or so, uh, a, a real life minute um, on normal speed for this to happen. See, see how this, this nurse came over here to do an idle animation instead of uh, going to help this guy. That's because he decided to go over here. Had he gone over to the nurse's station, he wouldn't have had as far to walk to uh, get the plaster caster going. Going here. Now, what, the other reason for the two nurses here is we've got one nurse that can work the plaster caster while the other gets people into and out of beds. Um, so that helps maintain efficiency. And again, it, it, it doesn't cue that up. That's, that's an issue with the AI, not necessarily with this room's design. Uh, but, they, you know, that way you have um, nurses that trade off with each other um, and can keep each other going. And of course, if one of them pops off for a break, like before, um, we're able to handle, um, you know, continue the, the uh, you know, operation. Um, 
you know continue having the the uh, the ward operating um, even if it's not at full uh, full efficiency one nurse can still keep this place going especially when you don't have an emergency and you actually have lighter traffic uh, we happen to get a rather big slew of both the emergency plus a bunch of natural uh, fracture patients coming through here uh, but so you uh, you can see over here we're pretty much done all we've got our the last of our uh, fracture patients here in uh, traction already um, and we've got um, we've got plenty of time to get them up and out of here um, so that my friends is the uh, the sawtooth fracture clinic I hope it serves you well uh, so if you guys like this episode and you want to see more like it, go ahead and hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and leave me a comment, good, bad, or indifferent. Your feedback's always welcome. And of course, if you know somebody else who might need this tip, um, go ahead and share the video. It uh, helps everybody uh, when you do that, and I'd mu be much appreciated. So until next time, this has been Pinstar signing out. See ya! Please don't blow up. <laughs> <laughs>